right. Well, here we are in the fourth episode of Tea Time with Marksman and Blue Belly, and we are getting chopped up on whole number one here <laughs> while, uh, while we chat uh, about uh, the things that we wish we either knew or did differently uh, when we got into content creation, particularly on YouTube. And the hope is that listeners will, uh, who are maybe thinking about getting started, these are some things that will, will help out from people who've learned, you know, I'll go ahead and say it, we've learned the hard way. So yeah, for you, sure. Marksman, what's it been like, um, like what would you, advice would you give to somebody who has nothing? They have, they, they have nothing but an idea and a love for games. How would you advise that they kind of get started? What are some things you learned along the way that we pass on to others? Um, I guess for the the first thing that I struggled with when I started my my gaming channel was, you know, have a personality if that makes sense. Like sometimes you're kind of too focused on the gameplay or, or what you're doing. My first couple of videos were pretty much all focused on gameplay. You know, I, there wasn't really any personality to them. You know, I, I really had to learn the hard way because of that. Nobody wants to watch that. It, it gets kind of, not boring, but, you know, people play games a lot, you know. For you to stand out, they need to like watching you play games, if that makes sense. Sure. So it's less about the game and more about you. And obviously, if you're super talented at a game, everyone wants to watch you because they like to learn off you. So if that's your pool, that's fine. But don't worry so much about the gameplay and worry a little bit about your personality, your your branding. We've kind of harped on that a lot, but it's it's kind of what shapes your channel. If, if you have no identity as a, as a channel, that's something that I had to develop later on. Like when I first started my channel, it was very basic and all that stuff that I've been able to implement came later, so... If you're able to start with that, I think that would help everyone out a lot. Yeah, that that's and that's good advice too that people need to realize that there are already a lot of gaming channels out there in the world. So what are you doing to set yourself apart? Um, then that goes with branding, but it, it also we all have our own personalities. So what are the things that make your friends like you or uh, that, that make you unique? I mean, there's some really weird people out there that have millions of followers. It's not necessarily that you have to act a particular way. It's just, can you present a, a, a storyline and a personality to people either can relate to or maybe they just like to watch you to hope you fail or <laughs> what i mean yeah you can have a, a lot of ways to go about it and, so yeah and people I, I can they really can sense authenticity you know yeah. you can tell a, a content creator that's not being authentic to themselves or you know to you as the audience so make sure you're, you're just you can tell that you're doing it because you like to do it and you have a you know a genuine authenticity don't try to be somebody else you know if you think you're not funny enough don't try to speak in an accent or you know make look a bunch of jokes and just rattle off you know <laughs> be yourself and you're doing content for me i was like when i first started like i said i took it so seriously i was terrified to be myself so i was just you know purely focused on just delivering gameplay and doing the best and you know very monotone very professional but that's good you can be professional but you can also per present a genuine look to your your content what is this thing oh no <laughs> it's like a carnival ride or something how to make me nauseous oh i'm dead oh no okay but yeah, I mean, oh. I like I was talking to uh, Blue Belly a little bit about, but I've had different non-gaming related channels as well in the past. And basically the common denominator in all of my content that I made was 
you know, create create yourself uh, a personality that is true to what you're actually like, but either, I don't know, a little bit different, because you kind of got to play, play your personality up a bit, because on a given day, you're not going to be screaming, like some people, that's their personality, they're loud and they're exciting. Most people aren't like that on a daily basis. So you kind of got to figure out what you want that to be to start off with because it is hard to develop that. Hmm. But but I think it's worth doing. You know, don't just be okay with the basic bare bones content because you're not going to grow as fast like that. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. And I would say on a like parallel point is don't feel like you're talking about authenticity Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you need to act wild and crazy right it just means do oh my (laughs) i'm like off the map uh it means like do the thing that you're good at that that makes you who you are as a gamer and if if you find like Like, I don't know, let's go with the the example of Minecraft. There are a lot of people that play Minecraft. Right. So if you're going to do that, what is it that you will bring to the table that makes your content differently? Like, when I first started playing Farm Sim as a creator, I I really like this guy named Daggerwood. He's he's from Britain, and he has a narrative style. He's just, like, very pleasant. You, You just... Get your cup of coffee and you put on a Dagoin video and you watch the story unfold. No real crazy editing. He does a, a little bit of editing, but it's not like there's no wild, crazy tricks. And I thought I want to be like that when I start my, you know, when I get going. And I did, and I got like 15 views. And the, he would do almost the exact same thing and would get 150,000 views. And I'm like, what the heck? Mm-hmm. But. For one thing, he was way earlier to market. Like, he's been doing it for a long time, so he has a following. And for another thing, I was not being myself, really. I was yeah. trying to be Daggerwin. Yeah, you <laughs> And you so were anybody that did happen to get a recommendation to watch my videos were probably like, oh, you know, these, he's just copying somebody else's style. Right. It's so like uh, I, Walmart yeah. brand Daggerwood. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, more accurate than I care to admit, honestly. <laughs> uh, and I think that's that would be a piece of advice that I would give people is maybe your first, you know, half dozen videos, maybe you just don't even publish them. Just create them and then watch them back. If you if they're too cringy for you to watch, <laughs> that's a bad. And that's a good sign that maybe oh. they're not ready to be. To, to be out there or if you if you find yourself saying i don't want my friends to know i'm trying youtube <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> that's that a red flag that, that you're not <laughs> ready right you know right. it should be like i'm super stoked i i've made something that i'm really proud of and mm-hmm. i would say don't be caught up in the effort trap i don't know if you had this experience when you started but um like just because you spent a lot of time on something doesn't make it good exactly and Sometimes it makes it bad. Right. Sometimes like a low effort one shot, but it has a it answers a question or it is entertaining. Sometimes that is better than things that you're like, oh my goodness, I spent so much time on this and now nobody wants to watch it. Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> right. Uh, but, so I guess that all comes under like the key, the core point of. I don't know why this is not. You working. hit it really hard. Okay. Um, I, see. I think this this all comes under the core point of being willing to be honest with yourself. Right. I think I'm back at the start. Yeah, you are. You have to like. There's a top platform that it launches you through, but it, it's. A I think I'm gonna. Feeling. There you go. Oh. <laughs> what? I think I'm gonna have all my. I'm not gonna do well in this one. That's what it's oh, what, what? Perfect. Just the way we drew it up. Like I said, <laughs> exactly. pretty strange this one, but I guess when I started YouTube for my first channel, I can say 
as a tip for if you're a little younger. I was freshman in high school, which is, you know, already you're kind of, like, nervous for people to, like, you know, be your true self around your friends and stuff because you're kind of changing and all that. Sure. But I was doing the whole, I was making Fortnite content. And if I'm being honest, like, at first I was just very basic, but actually I decided to tell one of my friends and that was one of the better things I could do because they, I mean, not encouragement, but it's just like when other people see it and like, they're like, oh yeah, that's cool that you're doing that. It kind of can give you motivation. So don't be terrified. Like if you're more nervous that your friends might like say something about it, then first off, if they're going to bully you over doing something that you enjoy doing they're probably not your friends anyway <laughs> yeah great point but you know sometimes that can really help you and after that i was like i was really motivated i stepped up my content and i stepped up you know being myself because knowing that my friends were watching they know me so if i'm acting fake they're gonna call me on it so that's kind of when i started to learn that you know being yourself is actually something that can grow your channel more than you know trying to be something else and I, I think that that's a good tip to start off there because you're gonna figure it out the hard way but take yeah. it from us it's kind of a pain to figure yeah out and, I, and i think because i started this all at a later stage in life um you know i was already married with a career and have kids and all of that all of that but i've i've always loved games and i've always loved writing and creativity and for me i i just you know i was watching other people that were making videos and i thought and well, for one thing i can do that uh but another thing i just it, it gave me an opportunity to kind of express my own personality in ways that I couldn't in my work environment and and other places right and it was neat to see I, I think one thing that we haven't talked about in any of our episodes yet that's that I it means a lot to me or matters to me a lot and that is that content creation is a meritocracy you if you're good at it and you will do well if you you know like if you can add value mm -hmm. then you will see success and you know some people like to blame the algorithm when their content doesn't do well but it's like that's the same algorithm that's working for all of us so right if you have a good video it means it's a good video and people are watching it and they're retaining and then i think a, a bit of advice though that that kind of comes from that meritocracy is like if a video doesn't work think about it take stock figure out why it's not working and make adjustments like that this is within your control it's within the realm of possibility for us to do as as creatives and if you're not interested in having that kind of self-critical perspective um Oh, and you're not willing to pay attention to the feedback that YouTube gives you. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's not for you, but that uh, taking on, you know, if you come up with an idea, like 99% of a good YouTube video is the idea itself. It's, it's, it's not the technical shooting it. It's not how good your thumbnail is or your tags. It's, is it a good idea to begin with? Right. Can you hook people with the concept? And so, you know, if you're coming up with ideas that you're not seeing anywhere else on YouTube and you're like, you know, it doesn't even have to be gaming content. You can just get other YouTube ideas, Mr. Beast or, right. you know, Ryan Trahan or like these kind of people. And like, how can I do that in the gaming universe that I like? How can right. I do that? Uh, apply a similar principle in my own creation? Uh, that's where you're you're gonna have a lot more success and that's how your personality can come out because you you are the one that had that idea you are the one that invented that concept and then people will be drawn to your imagination and your uh, creativity and your mindset 
more than or or as much as the actual final product of the video if that makes sense yeah yeah that makes sense because i guess that's another thing when i first started my original youtube channel that i deleted because it was bad but <laughs> no i kind of would just look up like oh these people are doing this and that's cool content right so i was like i'm gonna do that but like i brought up earlier it's walmart brand it's it's not as good as the person that originally came up with that because yeah. you're not as passionate as they were about it you know you just can't be one of my most successful youtube videos that i made was it was fortnite and i decided to pretend to be a cactus in the desert because there's a skin that was a cactus <laughs> i thought this would be funny and see if i could win the game just sitting in the desert posed as a cactus and uh, I did it, I talked during it, you know, I had fun with it, and it was super successful, and, you know, it was just because I was actually excited about that idea, and I think yeah. that's just really important to do. Yeah, when you're coming and, and that's, cre like, most people when they play Fortnite, they want to win, so they can relate mm -hmm. to the win condition that you built into the video, but at the same time, they, they're, like, thinking, I need bigger guns, or I need to build or jump high or whatever you know they're they're trying to win in a conventional way so you took a, a story that thousands of people can relate to and then you just tweaked it with that little bit of interest but what if i do this right. what if i pretend to be a cactus <laughs> that's you you put that little little slice of intrigue into it but that's that was your idea that came from your personality right. so that I think is a piece of advice that I would give to, to aspiring creators is don't worry about, you know, your first one or two or three videos being the thing that makes you some massive star. That's probably not going to happen. You might have three channels before you're successful, but every video that you put out, you should watch critically and pay attention to how it's received, how it does. Right. See if changing the the metadata on it changes the outcome of the video's performance. But also just make sure that the next video you do is just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the, the, the cuts that you do, the pacing, right. the, the phrasing in your narration, you know, maybe you try scripting on one and see, does it feel stiff and awkward? And then you try one where you're just extemporaneous and you just talk off the top of your head like you're talking to your friend. And then maybe you do one where you play with a friend or whatever. Like, always adapting and changing and learning until you say, boy, that one, that video does well with audiences and it's something that I feel like I'm good at, that I right. enjoy doing. And if there's work involved, which there probably will be, is it work that I can see myself doing? When it's 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and I want to have a video to go live the next day, do I want to be working on it? Because if you can get all those things to kind of work together, to mesh together, you are far more likely to be successful versus something that you're shoehorning because you want to be the next big YouTuber, because you want to make money off of it or something like that. Yeah, like I was, while we were talking, just scrolling through my, that original YouTube thing, the, like, I did, like, I, we say the hard way, but that still means I was doing it right. I was, yeah. I made original content, it was between Fortnite, I don't know if you know Destiny, and, uh, a Star Wars game at the time. Mm -hmm. Star Wars game was getting like one view. Destiny was getting one view. But every time I would make a Fortnite video and keep in mind, like this was just starting out, it would get like 20 views. Which, when you're just making this as a kid and it's just for fun, it's like, wow, that's a lot of people. Yeah. So, and then ever since that, you know, I did, each video I either edited better or made a more original idea, better thumbnail, like. It doesn't start at your fill in here, the, your favorite YouTuber, what level they're at. You can never start there, but you gotta 
if you want to be successful or if you want to use this as a creative outlet you kind of have to go at your own pace and figure out what works for you and you know like you said up the quality every time try to set that goal for yourself that eventually you'll reach a point where it looks super professional you can be happy with it and people can look at it and be like wow he actually does this you know this is something that he's good at well guys that does it for episode four of the tea time show uh i hope you guys really enjoyed and if you did please like the video subscribe to the channel and also give blue belly gaming a subscription as well he's doing a lot of cool stuff He's up to, I believe, three different channels now. So, please go show him some love and subscribe to his channels. Watch out some of his content. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Tea Time. Have a good day.